All right, everybody. Happy day. Happy day to you all. Uh, we are kicking off this daily daily video thing that I'm doing. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm a little pretty sure I'm back under the weather. Pretty, pretty sure that's what's happening. Uh, somebody mentioned that yesterday because I was all snipply and I figured it was just allergies because my allergies have been um, going up and down the last couple days. But uh, I was, uh, you know, I, I was kind of trying to, I was tapped out by like four o'clock yesterday and it was really, really difficult to get through the rest of uh, rest of the afternoon and I didn't know what the hell was going on. And then later in the evening, um, I had like this crazy intense pain in my ear and I was like, aha, sinuses, that's, that's, that's the haps, that's what's going on, we got, we got some sinus problems, uh, so I am making sure that I am, uh, I am drinking my tea, got my tea with the turmeric ginger, uh, this is my, uh, I, I really like this mug a lot for some reason, uh, my sister got me this mug, uh, it's an escape from Alcatraz mug, uh, that I've got here, uh, drinking with the, with the tea, uh, it's super fucking hot right now, uh, and I'm, like, kind of burning my fingers a little bit by picking it up, <laughs> so I'm gonna leave that back there for a minute, um, got my water, I took some, took some medicine this morning, um, and, and, uh, basically I'm at that point where I'm, like, okay, I guess, I guess I'm at the, at the mercy of whatever my body wants to do, whatever this mortal coil has decided, uh, that it is going to, uh, it is going to do with me. Um, so, so that's where, that's where, uh, I'm at. I'm going to keep doing my best. So I basically the last like two or three days, I just haven't been able to sit down and write or do anything past like four o'clock. I've been able to make these videos. I've been able to like edit them and put them up and update a few things and take care of these little, uh, little projects here and there. But like, it's been, it's been a crazy struggle because it's just, it's hard whenever I get to that point to like be able to focus on a thing. Um, so I get very distracted, uh, a lot easier and my, and my eyes will start hurting a lot quicker and I'll just kind of get, um, like uh, wonky that's sort of the thing that happens um uh whenever i get to this level and i hate it i hate it uh <laughs> it bugs the shit out of me but i know that i need to do it i know that i need to like chill out and take a rest and uh and just uh just just let my body recover the way that it needs to recover so i have the teas i have the water um, I've got, uh, I've got some OJ, a uh, lot of liquids, a lot of liquids is what I'm doing, but I wanted to make sure like right now my energy level keeps fluctuating. It keeps going up and down. Um, you know, so, so right now I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm at a, I'm at a pretty decent energy level to, to make this video and, and hopefully get it out and chat with you guys. Um, as, as this thing premieres and just as sort of a little backdrop of, of what, what the premieres mean, it's a pre-recorded video that's like going out live. So as you guys are watching the videos and leaving comments, I can reply to them, um, in the comment section of the videos as well. So, uh, comments are, comments are highly encouraged to be left. Um, I always appreciate it. Um, so, uh, yeah, please do leave a comment. Please do share this video out. If you have the means to, uh, you can, you can donate. Uh, I know we're all going through tough times, so it's like not absolutely necessary to donate. Um, but, uh, as, as is the case with several, uh, several different types of people in different types of industries from the service industry to the gig economy, to, uh, the entertainment industry, uh, we've all lost a significant chunk of our um, employment and income, and uh, those are not particularly the hard, the easiest things to like prove documentation and all that sort of stuff about. Um, you know, so it's like it's even harder for independent contractors to get unemployment sometimes, and especially in times like this. So uh, yeah, donations are are super super helpful if you can if you can. It's not a necessity. Uh, very appreciated and helpful if you can. But uh, with that said, um, 
let's uh, let's get into uh, our stories. The first one, I'm going to do a little bit uh, of uh, impromptu reading of uh, an article that has come out in regards to yesterday's story that I that I did. It was it was the longer segment that I talked about, which is basically Congress was was more more interested in posturing themselves um, than they were in uh, in actually solving the problem at hand. Um, and uh, as of, I guess, 2.20 a.m., this is an NPR report that I'm going to uh, kind of read some, some sections of. Um, they have come to an agreement, uh, I guess. Once again, I, I do want to point out that uh, uh, we, as the American people, um, were not at the negotiating table. Uh, Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, and Mitch McConnell, and I, I would say about 80% of Congress, um, they are not our representatives. They are representatives of the corporate elites. They are the representative of uh, the, the, bank, the banking industry, the fossil fuel industry. Um, they are uh, the representatives of the oligarchs that, has, that have bought them out. Um, that's what they are, because again, I I want to remind people that the the moment that Trump came out and said we need to give direct payments to Americans, uh, which was earlier last week, I think Monday or something um, last week, he he might have said something along those lines. The 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 Democrats were the ones that came out and said, no, we can't give these direct checks to people, to regular average working class people who are going to be suffering the most. Uh, we have to give small business loans so that they can keep their payrolls active. Um, and you know what uh, people don't want when they're not making any money and when their business is basically in trouble is a motherfucking loan that they need to pay back when all this is over. So it, again, as I mentioned yesterday, all these plans that they were coming out with were had zero foresight, zero fucking foresight at all. Um, so uh, now they've kind of come up uh, with, uh, you know, and then and then the Republicans came out and basically said, yeah, OK, we'll do this loan thing um, and we'll basically give the poorest of Americans virtually nothing um, in terms of this stimulus that we're going to pump out. You know, it's like fifteen hundred dollars if, if you made this much based on your tax filings from 2018, but if you don't have a tax filing or didn't make enough money to file taxes, then you get this very low amount of money. Like the, the most vulnerable in our community get the least amount of help, uh, which makes absolutely no motherfucking sense at all. But that's the way that they, they've decided that government should operate, right? Anyway, um, then they, the, the, the Democrats came back and were like, wait a minute, no. We don't like this plan anymore, right? So it just became this posturing battle, um, and uh, and as of yesterday, it, they were they were going back to the original thing of giving direct checks to America, which was again Tulsi Gabbard and Andrew Yang. Um, Andrew Yang popularized the idea of a universal basic income, um, giving direct checks, direct direct money to Americans, um, and uh, Tulsi Gabbard was the one that came up with the emergency UBI. And then you had Bernie Sanders that came up with a point-by-point -point plan of how you uh, make sure that your economy stays active um, in a time of crisis and then after the time of crisis. Um, and then uh, how, um, how healthcare and basically all these other industries involved with and surrounding the healthcare, uh, healthcare industry should act. So he made a point-by-point -point plan so all these outsiders came up with these plans, and now it's just like the corporate Democrats are co-opting these plans because uh, they see that they, this is an election year and somebody needs to say that one of these parties is good when neither of these parties is fucking good. So, um, yeah, so here's, here's, uh, here's what the article says. The Trump administration and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell announced early Wednesday that at the White House and uh, that the White House and Senate has reached a deal for the uh, an unprecedented two trillion dollar spending package aimed at propping up individuals, businesses, and the nation's healthcare system amid the onslaught of the coronavirus uh, pandemic, um, 
unprecedented is the key word there unprecedented this is only unprecedented because it's literally the first time that that congress is taking people into account beyond platitudes and they're actually like forced to do something about it um so uh mcconnell appeared on the senate floor to say that he had good news uh, McConnell said of the legislation, in effect, it's wartime level of investment, adding that it would come up for a vote later Wednesday. The Senate will reconvene at noon. Uh, war. Th this is a wartime level investment. Why? Why is it that these sort of investments are only made during wartime where we're like, oh, we need to pump up people is like, oh, when we need to go to war, that's when we need to like make sure people are taken care of because this thing is probably going to fuck the economy over. <laughs> the, the only time we've ever seen going to war actually be beneficial for the economy in any, any way um, was World War II, and that was like a completely different set of circumstances uh, than, uh, than, than what we have now. Uh, so let's see. Okay, so Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer followed... McConnell on the Senate floor saying we have a bipartisan agreement of the largest rescue package in American history, uh, not a moment of celebration, but one of necessity. Yeah, it's been necessary to do something like this if if this is even what we've actually been discussing. Right. If it if this is even something that um, is something that we've been talking about, which is which is an emergency UBI action, which is. Um, allocating more into, uh, uh, you know, uh, he healthcare funds and taking care of healthcare workers and making sure that we have field hospitals and making sure that we have free testing kits for everybody to, um, if it is, then yeah, this is one of necessity that needed to be addressed fucking like a month ago, you know, like a month ago it needed to be addressed. Um, Schumer said the deal was meant as a Marshall Plan for hospital and medical needs. Hospitals, which are on the front lines of a wave of new patients that have already strained resources, would get more than $130 billion, while state and local governments would get $150 billion to help cover expenses incurred uh, by the response to the pandemic. So they're okay. So they're basically like, yeah, we need to we need to have more money for uh, this healthcare system, which totally makes sense, and it needs to, it needs to be that way. Uh, the package would also give direct cash payments to most Americans, expand unemployment benefits, and put forth a $367 billion program to help small businesses make payroll, according to the Associated Press. Now, uh, what this doesn't say, and and perhaps we'll get an answer by when, by 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 you know today at some point, um, is uh, is this direct cash payment going to be? just that it's just going to be a payment untaxed by the government as as a as not a loan because if it's a loan that we're going to have to pay back later even if it's through next year's taxes or something then this is not really a bailout this is not really helping the american people again the 367 billion dollar program to help small businesses to make payroll is that 300 billion 367 billion dollars a loan that is going to be granted to small businesses that need it because there's a fuck ton of small businesses just just the ones that i know just the ones that i like go perform at you know places like the church of satire comedy club the robin theater uh the comedy closet Teehee's comedy club um you know uh uh le chat noir uh, mothers in atlanta like all of these places uh, just if you even just go and look at my calendar from like a year ago all of the places that i performed at are all small businesses they're all diy venues like they're and that's just my calendar you know like there's so many fucking mom and pop joints and uh and and if and if this is just you giving them a loan to help them out with um, with small business costs or, or, or to make payroll, that's not really helping them out. You gave Wall Street $1.5 trillion and then more money after that where you just made that money up. So you're helping out companies and corporations that don't need help. They're fine. 
The CEOs of all of these fucking corporations are going to be fine. They don't fucking need help. Regular average Americans do, right? The people that people that in a month are going to sit there and be like, I have this much money in my account and I have to figure out how to stop XYZ payments and not occur late charges and interest fees for all the payments that I can no longer afford to make. Like this is, if it's a loan, then this is stupid. Every laid off or furloughed worker would have their salary uh, re, re, uh, remunerated. Remunerated is that the way you say that word? I I don't know. If if it's not, just uh, leave a fanatic comment. <laughs> uh, remunerated by the um, by the federal government. Uh, the deal also includes strict oversight, accountability, and transparency of all the loans to corporate America enabled by the legislation. Is it going to be an actual loan or are you just going to give them the money and then be like, oh, don't worry about it. We're just going to address it with tax credits and then lower your tax rate anyway, because that's usually what the fuck happens. The agreement followed days of intense wrangling amid pressure to uh, do a deal quickly as much of the country went into lockdown to contain the spread of the virus and global markets crash. Hmm, it's almost like the global markets are dependent on on us, on people, <laughs> on people taking out loans and being in debt and paying off that debt. Hmm, it's almost like Wall Street and, and the banking system uh, don't fucking matter as much as the people do. Holy shit. Doesn't matter how much money you arbitrarily pump into that system, it's gonna run out anyway. Because we're not spending any money. We don't have any confidence in the fact that if we spend money on things that things like stocks or fucking real estate or or you know, investment accounts or whatever, that it's actually not gonna fucking matter. Hmm. Go figure. Go figure. The sudden move on legislation occurred after House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said Tuesday that Republicans and Democrats had seemed close to bridging disagreements that had previously stalled the package. Uh, I think there's real optimism we could get something done in the next few hours, Pelosi said to CNBC, despite broad agreement on both sides of the aisle uh, that the package was urgently needed ironing out. Uh, the details proved tricky. One of the final sticking points was the size of the government guaranteed subsidized loans to large, larger industries, including the airlines. Ultimately, the figure arrived at was five hundred billion dollars, according to AP. So, so now the airlines, or I guess corporate America, is getting a, a, a five hundred billion dollars subsidized loan. And if if our deal as American people is not better than that, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't really fucking see us getting, um, keeping this system around uh, for too much longer. I mean, fuck, you had you, t you had the lieutenant governor of Texas yesterday uh, talking about how people need to sacrifice themselves to the economy, like. Do I mean how much more do we need to prove that there there is a religiosity surrounding this shit that that money has now become the religion in America based on this unfettered unregulated capitalistic system that it, that's what it is right like we are now at the stage where it's no longer an economic principle that is meant to help out people that is meant to decrease poverty that is meant to decrease suffering in the world because capitalism in this country hasn't done that there's there there's a vast income um, income divide uh, there there are a shit ton of homeless people there are shit tons of people that can't afford a home that lost their homes there's a shit ton of poor people in this country that have to work two three jobs in order to make ends meet and pay all their bills this is capitalism at work here and now it's got to this religiosity level where we're doing what the Mayans did when they truly didn't understand what the sun wanted, right? And they were like, oh, you know how we keep the sun burning is by sacrificing a bunch of people. That's what the sun wants. The sun wants us to sacrifice a bunch. Look, if that's what you're getting from all of this, then then we're done. The system is done. Uh, it, once we go into let's 
let's make human sacrifices to keep the economy going. Uh, I think we need a new economy. I think it's probably time that we got a new one. You know, one that didn't work on human sacrifices, maybe, you think? <laughs> Name one time in history that when somebody has asked for a human sacrifice, that everybody's been like, this makes sense. This is the right thing to do. I think even like in the Mayan days, there were probably a couple of people that were like, are you sure this is what the sun wants us to do? Kind of seems crazy that the sun which seems like it's a bajillion miles away, would want us to just kill this random lady. Uh, seems, anybody want to say anything about this? No, we're all just going to shut the fuck up and watch this person die on an altar? Like, what a ridiculous statement to make. So we'll see what happens with it. Um, according to this, they're, they're, uh, they've agreed to uh, you know, help out the American people, giving stimulus checks and so on and so forth. Um, we'll see if that's, if that's actually what they do and when those checks come out because April 6th was when Trump wanted to get those checks sent out. When, when are you guys going to send it out? April 5th because you have to posture again? Ugh. All right. So, um, amid this uh, this this COVID nineteen situation, uh, the DOJ is tr trying to get emergency powers. Uh, basically, um, they want to pause all court proceedings during an emergency, uh, which would mean that if you are arrested for anything. Uh, or have have been arrested uh, for anything uh, in the midst of this, uh, you can't have a trial to seek release. So you just you're you're just guilty, and then you remain guilty, and there's no habeas corpus involved uh, because the courts have decided that that's what they need to do. And uh, so this is technically unconstitutional because habeas corpus is a constitutional right, uh, and uh, if the proceedings are paused and you're in jail then you just stay in jail that doesn't that's what the fuck like if you how how is it that a system that constantly tells people that they need to be safe during this time of crisis is just like yeah but we're gonna do a bunch of shit that's the opposite of that though but you guys but don't but you don't you dare but don't you dare because because we'll get you We'll get you. I don't think jails are, again, we talked about this a couple days ago. It's like, I don't even think, like, county jails are probably the most sanitary location. You know, like, that's... And, and this continues to push this narrative. That we are guilty before proven innocent. That's what this does. If you're gonna if you're gonna pause proceedings, um, look. If you're gonna pause proceedings, then fine. Um, put these people on a probationary period, I guess. You know, with with uh, with with limited interactions or something. Because I get it. You got to go through the system, whatever. But this is not the system that uh, is is it, it's just illogical to maneuver a system like this where you're just like, oh, you got arrested for something and you're going to be in jail and we had a trial plan for you, but now all this other stuff is going on so you can just stay in jail is completely, it doesn't make any fucking sense as to why this would be this way, why the system would operate this way. Um, to get them home, right? And, and just give them limited interaction. I don't know, try maybe a temporary house arrest for the situation. Um, and, and figure out, figure it out that way. But, but, but let's just keep them in jail. Let's, let's not provide them with, with a trial to prove their innocence. Um, and by the way, you shouldn't have to prove somebody's innocent because it's innocent before proven guilty, not guilty. And then prove to us that you deserve your freedom. It's an extremely backwards way of looking at the law. 
So this is pretty dangerous. This kind of puts push pushes us further into the um the the realm of uh what what the the intelligence community has been convincing us of uh which is that we are uh we are absolutely guilty uh in their eyes of everything that they have conceived that we are guilty of right and it does and and it's not up to them to prove that guilt it's up to us to prove our innocence um and uh, and you know their their innocence, the the they will only accept what they feel like they need to accept as a uh, gesture of innocence, and uh, and if you're gonna if you're gonna pause trials the way that they're they're talking about now to give emergency powers over to the Department of Justice, um, this is uh, this is a bad precedent that we're setting, because you could just consider something a state of emergency now. Uh, and, and basically say, well, we're going to pause all these trials and keep these people in prison. Um, you know, they can, they can adjust this law any way that they want. So keep, keep your eyes peeled for, 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 for some of that bullshit. Um, and, uh, and look, I, I think, you know, we should be speaking out against things like this, um, giving giving this much power over to the Department of Justice, giving this much power over to just one specific area. Uh, it's it's a slippery, slippery slope, and it can lead to some pretty authoritarian things very quickly. I mean, not that it hasn't already. Um, the, the the state of uh, the American surveillance state is is pretty much authoritarian. Uh, Vault seven. Walt 7 was, was uh, 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 information that was leaked by WikiLeaks and Julian Assange that proved that the CIA was using uh, all of our optical devices to and, uh, and audio devices to, to spy on us. And, uh, and they were like, yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, because, because we have to make sure that you're protected. We, uh, we were fine. We were fucking fine. Yeah, but what if you weren't, though? That's why we need to keep an eye on you fucking all the time, right? The Panopticon. Uh, the Panopticon is uh, is basically like a tower. Uh, the first way that it was described was it's a tower um, that would... Uh, you'd never know who was in that tower, and it would, it would have a way to watch uh, the entire prison yard or city or, or, or whatever it was meant to keep an eye on. And, uh, and it was really, you know, uh, like it would fuck up your mental health a whole bunch because you never knew who was in that tower. You never knew whether you were or were not being watched. So it would like goof with your head. Uh, so everybody kind of acted a very certain way of like, okay, we're following the rules. Everybody, oh, don't, okay, don't, I can't, tr if, what if this guy's a bad guy and I don't fucking, you know, like there was a lot of mistrust in that society uh, and, uh, and we're there and we purchased it. We purchased, we purchased our own panopticons, you guys. Uh, they're, they're basically using that as a, as a way to keep, uh, keep, keep an eye on all of us to make sure that we're innocent, to make sure that the innocent is protected, not to, uh, to spy on us and fucking treat us like we're criminals. Why would you need to spy on us unless you think we're guilty of something? And again, it needs to be proof of that guilt. Well, there isn't any proof of the guilt. Most of us are just living our lives, the you know, on a on a pretty average basis. Nobody's doing anything. The only reason the way you would need to do that is to spy on private conversations to be like, aha, this guy doesn't believe it, that the intelligence community is is doing them good. And then you know, you go and do unconstitutional things under the guise of safety and protection that and that's what the doj is going to to veer into here is by is is by claiming what what emergency powers they need during any sort of a crisis um and and putting a bunch of people in prison that don't need to fucking be there that have that that you've just deemed as guilty instead of letting them go through an actual trial okay uh, the last two 
Uh, I have two more stories for you guys today, and uh, they are different from the earlier stuff <laughs> that we've covered. Um, this one, the, the last two have to deal with, uh, with mental health stuff. I've been talking a lot about mental health stuff this week, and I think it's important because uh, we are veering into that territory where I think we could all use a little bit of mental health advice. Uh, we could all use a little bit of good mental health practices. Um, I know I could, for sure, uh, because any time that I get to this level where I'm not feeling well or... Uh, you know, where my energy is a little bit low for whatever reason and I can't write and I can't create content or I can't be on the road or doing something creative, um, I get, uh, it's real bad. Like I get, I, I fall into very like depressive and a a anxious uh, cycles in my own head, especially when you're by yourself too uh, and you don't have positive um, positive conversations to be had and, and things of that sort is it, it, it's easy to get trapped in your head, but um, what uh, what might help all of that sort of stuff is uh, is soil. Just just some good old soil, you guys. If you got a green thumb, uh, you you might be able to combat depression uh, because uh, soil mycobacteria are good for ser serotonin productions to help fight with depression. So. Uh, there are these bacteria in soil that actually work with our body composition and help release serotonin um, to help us combat d depression. So doing gardening and and uh, and and working with with plants and and being with the earth, um, and, you know, even even if it's going outside and and I might do this later today and just kind of dig your toes into the ground just to feel the the earth, to feel the grass and stuff. It's it's it feels really cool. Like it feels great. Um, any time that I've gotten a chance to do that, I I loved it. I used to do that when I was a kid in India. Is I would run around with like no shoes on and shit all the time, uh, you know, really get the fucking mud and dirt and stuff in between my toes. It was awesome. It was super fucking fun. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, I and and a kid, like kids are always so fucking happy about things. Um, now. There, there is an issue in in, sense, in the sense of soil that uh, we're running out, or or a lot of our soil is contaminated um, because of all the shit that we have around us, right? Uh, we're we're driving, you know, carbon emitting machines, um, we're fracking. There, there's radiation coming in from various different points. Um, so. There, there's a, there's a notion that the soil is contaminated, but we have a solution, uh, and that's hemp. Hemp can uh, restore soil and remove toxins from the earth. It's, it's actually a, a incredibly versatile plant. Um, some people might know hemp as you know, pe people can make clothing out of it, paper out of it. Um, th there's a variety of different uses. For hemp, it's a very durable, very versatile plant. And now, if you add hemp into your soil, it'll absorb some of the toxins. Uh, industrial hemp, specifically, um, can be used for a process called bioremediation, which is essentially you're, you're remedying the biological area that you are, uh, you're adding this, this thing to, right? Um, so it'll heal the soil. And, in, and, they, and they've done tests all around the world to prove that this is a, a viable means of, uh, of, of helping the soil. Uh, in 1986, in Ukraine, they removed radioactive elements from the soil after the Chernobyl incident. That's huge. That's huge. Like, Chernobyl was a big deal. And, uh, and, and they were able to, like, remove the radioactive elements by introducing help, uh, hemp into the, um, into the soil. And, and they discovered that it's not only removing the radioactive elements, but it's also removing heavy metals, um, uh, pesticides, solvents, uh, explosives, crude oil, landfill, leaching. All of these toxins are, uh, are, are getting removed out of the soil. So you just have nice, fresh, clean soil. Uh, to 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 you know to work with to to utilize for to make g good food for for your your population uh, and that's in Ukraine that they did that uh, cadmium cadmium is a heavy metal that causes 
Uh, muscle pain, joint pain, it can cause spinal problems in people if there's too much cadmium in your system. Well, in China, uh, they use hemp to remove cadmium out of their farms um, and clean up their soil. Uh, you know, and and it, they call they call the, they call it phytoremediation, which is air, soil, and water uh, gets hazardous contaminants removed from it. Um, so so they're using it for this process. And uh, and in 2008, an Italian farmer saved his livestock by treating his grass with hemp because his farm was built near a steel plant, and it removed the heavy metals and toxins that were in the grass. Um, by the way, this is like basic bi like basic biology shit, right? Like, like the cow. If there's toxins in the earth, they wind up in the grass. The cow eats the grass. The toxins go into the cow. We eat the cow. The the, the toxins go into us, and and so on and so forth, right? And then when we die, the toxins go back into the ground because we have this notion that we need to bury our dead in a fucking box. So, why isn't it happening in the States? Why isn't the, the United States um, utilizing this, especially because we have so much fracking going on, so many pipelines that we're trying to build, uh, we're, we're contaminating water left and right. Flint, Flint has a water crisis. Um, you know, Pittsburgh has a water crisis too. Uh, a lot of places don't have good water because we privatized it and now uh, the water supply is, uh, is not as good as it, it used to be uh, because of the bogus war on drugs. That's why. Hemp is, hemp is, um, is, is illegal or uh, I can't remember if it's illegal or just has heavy, heavy restrictions put on it. Uh, but I know you have to import hemp and stuff um like you have to look at other countries and there's a there's a limit on what you can and can't do uh, i can't remember exactly what it is but if you know about it uh leave a comment down below uh and uh and i will take a look and and yeah we'll we, we'll, we'll chat about it in the comments if, if you would like to uh but but look this is this is preventing some real major environmental reforms um, this is this is preventing some major agricultural reforms um, because you know part of part of the thing with with the, sh the issue with soil itself is that we keep planting the same shit over and over again and when we do that um, the soil starts to to lose uh, like nutrients and it's and it's richness um, so it just goes bad it just gets stale uh, think about it, like even when you do the same thing over and over again, don't you kind of get bored and don't you kind of get like sick of it and you're kind of like less enthusiastic about it because you're just doing the same shit over and over again every single day and it doesn't, you know, there's no variety in it. There's nothing that you're switching up and trying something new and different, you know, like like that happens to humans and, and whether you like it or not, there, you know, soil is alive. There's bacteria and stuff. We do, we talked about the mycobacteria at the top of the segment and like that's soil's alive. So I'm pretty sure if you keep planting just corn over and over again, that soil is going to be like, ugh, fucking whatever. Like there's no news and there's nothing new being, being thrown into it. Um, variety is the spice of life. Uh, it, it, even even in soil, so sometimes you gotta p plant spices. And I know in America, saying you gotta plant spices, that's like crazy, you know, because most Americans can't handle anything fucking spicy. <laughs> most my brother-in-law's uh, kind of crazy. He 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 outdoes pretty much everybody in my family with the with the spices that he can handle. Um, but. But that's what we need. And I talked about this about a year ago on a Forkful episode, but there's this thing called rotational farming where you use the land to plant different kinds of foods and different kinds of plants at different points in the year. And, you know, those plants provide the soil with various different nutrients to keep it rich, to keep it um, as, as, as strong as it can be. So rotational farming is... Something this guy named Robert Rodale talked about, and it's and it's like a huge way to fucking help farming. 
and, and completely change the way that we farm, it would probably change the way that we look at the agricultural industry and the economics surrounding the agricultural industry um, and help us be a little bit more understanding of like when things are in season and when things are out of season um, and how to be patient about these things. Like it, I, think, I think just it, just using that one thing would kind of transform a bunch of different things about this, the, the society and culture that, uh, that we are, that we are living in. Um, now here's the other, th here's the other part of it though. This, this, this is the last thing I want to say about the subject matter is look, just because we have a way, let's say we legalize hemp and we start using this in our soil and start pulling out, you know, uh, all the awful shit, the, the heavy metals and, uh, the fossil fuel toxins and the, and the landfill leaching and the plastics and all this shit that's in our soil now. Uh, we introduce hemp into it. It starts uh, over the course of the next five years, leaching all of it out, cleaning up our soil, making it more, making it stronger for us to make better food. That doesn't mean um, that we should continue doing the things that we're doing. It doesn't mean that we we don't need a renewable source of energy. That's a, a, a clean renewable source of energy. Um, it doesn't mean that we don't need to divest away from fossil fuels or uh, not have pipelines going through communities, right? We, we got to keep pushing for both of these things uh, because we might have a way to undo the bullshit that we've done to our soil um, and then figure out how to possibly do that to our, w w to our air. Um, I know there are some people that say that I don't think we can help the, the atmosphere based on the damage that we've done. Uh, you know, the, the amount of carbon that's in the atmosphere is too high uh, and maybe that's true, maybe that isn't, but we're never going to get there until we try to f do something about it uh, and, and then change, change our behavior patterns in order to like create a better system at play. Uh, so yeah, you know, I, I don't, I think we should, we shouldn't just use this as like a stopgap is sometimes what happens is, and, and this happens all the time, politically speaking, this happened, right? Is like, we get to this point where we go, yay, we did a thing that kind of resembles progress and now we can continue doing all of the other bullshit that we were doing, right? Like like when Obama became president, I think everybody was just like, yay, first black president, we solved everything in America. America is fixed now and everybody's gonna have health care and racism. Is, and it was like, no, everything was not fixed because and it's the same thing with Bernie Sanders. If Bernie Sanders gets elected and becomes president, it doesn't mean that you know, all the problems that we're facing with capitalism, all the problems that we're facing with this unregulated, unfettered system gone amok is just going to be fixed. It, you know, it's it's cool that we have a leader that represents the progress that we want to see, but we're still going to have to fight and try to achieve that progress. So and this is the same thing is if hemp gets legalized, it doesn't mean that everything is fixed. It means that now we have to implement it and do the work that we need to do in order to make sure um, that things stay as good as, as, as they can be. Uh, so, so, you know, the fight, the fight doesn't stop with just this thing. This is just sort of the beginning is what I'm describing here. Uh, and our final, uh, story, the final topic of discussion, um, it comes from, uh, Gabor Mate. Gabor Mate is Aaron Mate's dad. Uh, Aaron Mate, fantastic journalist, uh, does a show called Pushback. Highly recommend that to to people, uh, but I uh, but I remember seeing this a, a little while back, and uh, uh, I, I like I like uh, Gabor Mate. He's he's great. I hope I'm pronouncing his name properly too. Uh, I might not be, but uh, he basically said we need to rethink the way we look at addiction. Right? If we look at addiction as a symptom of trauma, it would change fundamentally the way that we interact with each other and the way that we interact with this this thing this process that, that people are going through, um, that, that addiction, you know, is a result of what happens when somebody goes through a traumatic thing, they get, they get addicted to, to certain things, um, and you know, like drugs, alcohol, that sort of stuff. Um, uh, and if we look at it that way, it'll start changing a couple of things in our society. And I do think that I do, I do agree with him on that point. Like we have to look at what, why people choose to be addicted to certain things. 
and if it's related to trauma or or how it's related to trauma rather and i think it would change the way that that law enforcement and criminal justice look at things like drug cases and duis um and they and they would look at it with a more sympathetic light um and possibly be able to offer um help along with the the punishment and the redemption aspect of it um so you know if you do get a dui it's like okay what's going on what's what's in your personal file you know let's look at let's let's bring in a trauma caseworker in here and talk to this person and um you know and, and a great way to do that uh too is um mdma as a therapy aid uh, I've mentioned this, I mentioned this in a stand-up act, um, in a show called Approaching Happiness, where, um, basically it's a therapy aid. You, you, you give patients, uh, a, a specific dose of pure MDMA, not molly or ecstasy, because those are, um, those are cut with other drugs. And it's a therapy aid to get people to open up about, uh, any sort of trauma that they might have experienced, they um, they don't they don't have the negative aspect of it. They kind of look at it through this either neutral or more positive lens, and are able to just talk about it. And if you're able to talk about it, then you're able to address it. You're able to evaluate with it, and you can figure out methods of coping with it. So MDMA helps us do that. Um, and right now, it's the most researched of all the psychedelic drugs. Um, but I think it would just, but doing this, doing it this way and looking at addiction as a symptom of trauma might also help uh, society reevaluate itself, right? Is, is like how much of our behavior and how much of how we interact with the world around us and how much of how some of these leaders have chosen to um, lead essentially is related to their trauma. You know, because because these leaders that we elect into office are not gods. They are human beings just like us, you know. So so what what got them to the point where they are leaning so hard to being addicted to money? That's something that that you can look at. What 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 happened in their childhood? What happened in their past? Did something you know, did they have to go through some kind of a survival methodology or something? Um you know, in order to get there and then evaluate how we can improve our society based on uh, addressing and coping with trauma that we have induced in ourselves. I, I, I stand by this. I legitimately think that most of humanity is traumatized by its own history. Like our history from from the from the start of recorded history, I think, has, you know, has always had people that come out and it's like, no, cooperation. We have to have a sense of community. We have to understand differences. We have to look at people through a compassionate lens. And then you also have the other side that's like, whatever's different, uh, we have to uh, kill it and burn it and destroy it and get it away from us. So, you know, our history has had this huge level of conflict uh, that I think has has traumatized us to a pretty core level. Um, and, you know, now you have ways that you can talk about trauma, talk about these things, and then start changing these different aspects of our society, Ch and changing and understanding uh, humanity a little bit better, understanding the collective consciousness a little bit better, right? Uh, and I think that's, honestly, it's also going to come from, uh, at this point, you know, because we're, because we're able to look at what MDMA is doing in terms of being used as a therapy aid, I think we can we can probably get to a point where we can legalize all drugs and not just legalize it, but we also have to have an education program that is honest, not, not the dare program because the dare program was fucking stupid and terrible. And, uh, all it did was create uh, a bunch of scared people that didn't understand what drugs were and, um, you know, said, no, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. It's evil. It's awful. Don't ever experience it. And, and it, you know, kind of built this, oppositional level of curiosity and uh and didn't really help the case so a bunch of people started doing doing drugs and you know again if that helped them get through their trauma then they they 
they keep doing it. Um, so we, we have to look at it that way and we have to legalize and educate people on the reality of drugs, right? Like all of them, all of them. Uh, and, and you have to learn how these drugs affect you on a personal level because uh, it, 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 uh, they, they affect you differently. Everybody kind of has a different effect. Um, like I'm somebody that if, if I experience cannabis, I'm not like, it doesn't even matter what it is, but usually like, I'm just kind of laid out. I, it just puts me to sleep. It puts me to bed. So I kind of don't really do a whole lot. Of, um, you know, so it's, but other people don't have that effect. Other people are up and at them. They're fucking buzzing around and they're high as balls all day. And they're like getting books written and they're fucking, you know, get, writing code, and and they're 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 shopping, and they're fucking, they do all that shit, and they're masters at it, and they're very good at. It. I'm just not. I know that's not my, that's not my thing. So so it's it's all. So you can be in a controlled environment. You can study your trauma. You can study yourself. You can be a little bit more introspective about who you are. Um, but you should know. You should know exactly what these drugs are doing. Like heroin, for example. Um, you know, Lenny Bruce once described doing heroin uh, as kissing God, which Im immediately to me, it's just like, nope, don't want to, I'd never want to get anywhere near this. Uh, it's like kissing God. Holy shit. You know, I'm already an anxious person. Like I'm, I'm a ball of anxiety as it is. You know, what if I'm not, what if I'm not a good kisser? You know what? I mean, God's probably kissed like so many billions of people and what if like I'm not even fucking top one million you know like what I don't, and I don't even know what God likes you know what is God the type of uh, deity that likes a little little nibble on the lips you know do I go in for a soft kiss am I using tongue how much tongue how much tongue is too much tongue with God it's too much there's too much anxiety involved in this situation but Here's the other side of it, right? Lenny Bruce described it as kissing God, which is uh, very, very uh, uh, anxiety-inducing for me. But it's also, he said that eventually it, it constipates you so much that in order to poop, you got to take a bath. And I'm not. Uh, I don't know if anybody <laughs> needs to be that dedicated to pooping that it becomes uh, that it becomes an event in your life uh, where it's like oh I think I need to to poop better better get the Epsom salts and uh, and draw up a nice warm bath get some candles lit because yeah I mean come on if you're not, if you're gonna do a bath you might as well do a bath properly you know you're, we're we're not savages here you know you get yourself a you get a a, a nice candle maybe a uh, a, a, a Tori Amos record, you know, and you relax your body, you dip in, uh, and then and then you're you're ready to 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 remove the waste out of your body after years of heroin abuse. But see, this is the sort of thing that I think we need to learn about these drugs, right? Is and if you're doing it in a safer environment, um, it's going to help us a lot more in our society, I think. Uh, to experience certain things, to to deal with addiction in a, in a specific manner, right? Because if you are doing that, there's going to be a record to say that, uh, you know, Chris came in and he did uh, this much LSD on this date. And then, wait a minute, he's coming back again a day later to do a little bit more. Wait, and then back again. And so so then they're like, hey, what's going on? You, you keep coming back and doing this treatment. Are you doing OK? What do you do? You need to discuss something. Um, and it just fundamentally changes the way that we uh, look at mental health, the way that we treat mental health, the way that we treat addiction, um, and the way that we are learning to address, evaluate, and cope with trauma. So, so I, I think I think Gabor Mate is onto something. I think we should look at addiction as a symptom of trauma, um, and uh, and and if if we can start looking at it in that in that lens and in that direction. Uh, we, we might be able to transform society for the better, I think. So, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think that's the end. We, we don't have any more, any more things to cover today, folks. That's it. That's all the news. Uh, so just shut it down and, uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I know 
but you should you should shut the news down for for a little while every so often and and um you know recharge and and things of that sort but uh i'm gonna i'm gonna probably do about the same um see where my energy levels uh, land uh, for the rest of the day i really i really want to write these pieces uh i'm very excited about them but but you know when when i get into that cloud that that head cloud that happens it's really hard to concentrate um and uh and and get get stuff written um so i'm hoping for the best for today today might end up being an extended rest day um and you know i, I don't know but i'm going to i'm gonna, i've got some tea that i'm going to keep drinking i've got some oj that i'll probably uh, keep drinking as well. Um, you know, sometimes it, you, like my body also feels, you know, um, not great. Uh, and you know, I, I, I do think that part of this is because I went outside when it was cold and then the temperature shifts and all that stuff is probably what, what kind of did it. So I have to be a little bit more careful and take a little bit more precautions if I'm going to go out for a walk make sure I check the weather and things of that sort. But, uh, yeah, that's, that's the, that's the, the, the full, uh, road reflection-y situation, um, for, for today. Um, gonna try to keep, keep my head in a, in a positive headspace. Um, and I hope you guys are too. Uh, like I said, please like, share, make sure that you're subscribed to all this, uh, because that's important. Uh, they, they, Sometimes they unsubscribe people, and I'm not a big, uh, big you know, guy on the on the content f creation front or whatever. But uh, you know, I got some people that that listen to this stuff. So if you if you're a regular listener, you know, make sure you're still subscribed. Um, if you can, uh, you can donate at ramennoodlescomedy.com/slash/donate. That's R-A-M-A-N noodlescomedy.com/slash donate. Uh, I really appreciate all the people that have already donated, uh, that continue to make sustaining membership donations, um, that have downloaded my albums, that have uh, supported all of this stuff. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you guys are staying safe out there. I hope you guys are uh, keeping it together. I hope you guys are taking care of your mental health. And uh, tomorrow, um, so Thursday, we'll do one more round of, uh, of these, these sort of news stories. Um, and then Friday, we'll do Philosophy Friday. Uh, I, have, uh, I have some stuff that I'm excited to talk about. Uh, we're, we're, we're probably going to delve down the ego. Um, thinking about that quite a bit. Uh, then Saturday is Storytelling Saturday. Uh, I think I know which story I want to I wanted regale you guys with. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and then Sunday, we'll go live. Uh, so if, um, if you have story ideas, if you have topics of discussion that you would like me to, to delve into, um, you know, especially for that live one on Sunday, uh, please do message me or email me because, uh, then I'll have a way to, to look it up. Um, so, uh, I'm very, very open to, to those sort of things. Very, very open to those kind of suggestions because sometimes I get lost and sometimes there isn't stuff to talk about because we're only talking about this, this virus. Um, you know, and there's, there's probably a lot more things to talk about. So, um, yeah, please, please do, uh, send me some stories if you have any stories or, or topics of discussion that you would like me to delve into, um, but uh, I'm going to I'm going to chill and take it take it as easy as I can today and uh, spend some time recovering, uh, which is very difficult for me to do. Uh, but I will see you guys tomorrow. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for donating. You guys are the fucking best. Uh, but till tomorrow, uh, stay taboo, and we'll see you on the road, folks. Bye.